Women have power, they have intelligence that we aren't using because, after all, there's nothing worse than the nerdy myth. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think a lot of these things and these myths and a lot of it's been, you know, perpetuated through the media, through movies, through culture, through Wait a music. minute, a lot of it's been perpetuated through religion. And through religion, yeah. And come on, we don't, yeah, through we, religion. we don't want to admit that perhaps, perhaps what we're dealing with is too many years of a religion based on the superiority of that white male that wasn't white. not a teacher. Teachers dispense facts and figures in order to get kids ready for the end of your testing and for more of the same. That's not what I do. I leave people out of ignorance, people of all ages. So be careful about how you pronounce that word. Okay. Words have power and you should use them properly and carefully and you should pronounce them correctly. Okay. And we've had lots of presidents who said education. W. Constantly said education. Well, Somebody needed to take him aside and say, W, the word is education. We aren't worthy. We, one of the main differences between white people and people of other color groups is when white people come into a new environment, they immediately adjust the environment to fit their needs. When people of other color groups come into a new environment, they immediately adjust their needs to fit the environment. And you look at this country since we got here, we white folks, in less than 400 years, we have managed to destroy the water, the air, and the land in a vast, on vast areas in this country. Let's stop here. You are listening to the voice of novelist, author, poet, Lamont Anthony Wright, also known as Graffiti Blue. I know you are here to absorb the vast wisdom of educator Jane Elliott, a woman I have had the pleasure of meeting, speaking to, and the pleasure of filming. Off camera, I found her to be amazingly grounded, compassionate, and considerate, especially considering her level of celebrity. Upon Miss Elliott's request, she did not want me to edit her conversation with Rachel McKinley out of context. So outside of the beginning of this conversation already uploaded to this channel titled Jane Elliott, Race, Religion, and Education that had edits panning back and forth, but nothing out of context. This video is a single perspective played straight through to better accommodate the verbal agreement between Miss Elliott and I, which allowed me to have the content on this channel. Now, whether you're a follower of her crusade or not, I truly hope you listen to her wisdom with an open ear and a receiving heart. They the land. They sold the land. They you know where they came from? from? They had, they were rooted to this land. You know where they came from? The they came from Africa. Yes. Just like everybody else. Because yes. those, those Africans, those black people, mm -hmm. moved away from the equator. And as they moved farther and farther from the equator, their hair, their skin, and their eyes got lighter and lighter. They populated every landmass on the face of the earth was populated by somebody whose ancestors are black. I mean, My ancestors yeah. are black. I mean, they're finding more so people like in Cambodia and Asia, and that like you know, I've heard that even the, like some of the samurai in Japan were African and black. Like yes, and there's a <laughs> so this history has been varied. Well, well, but you see, you can't talk about what you don't know. And we've all learned the same ridiculous thing. The same textbooks. But yeah, my yes. history books didn't change in, um, in middle school. It was all about, we focused mostly on the, the white men who dominated and the conquistadors mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you know, overthrew these beautiful cultures and societies who mm -hmm. had it all figured out. Mm -hmm. They were in tune with universal laws and spirit and land and had thriving communities. And all we lived really actually in the means and never tried to, it wasn't about they power, didn't adjust, it was about domination. And they didn't adjust the environment to fit their needs. There's a man in this country who they taught people to, They taught people to be themselves, and that was shared. Like each person was born with an innate gift and purpose, and they were all respected. As long as you belong to the same tribe. Yeah, as long as you. But I mean, that's yeah. the tribal, <laughs> that was the tribe. Yeah, you know, don't, don't romanticize. No. 
First Nations people. Yes. Absolutely, and the, but their Russia. violence, they practice war. They, they practice that skill more than going out for the purpose of killing people or defeating the whole mess of people. They practice their fighting skill. They practice, yeah. they practice their craft. They practice how to stay alive. That's not the reason we fight wars. They, we fight wars. Survival. Yeah, well, we fight wars for somebody else's natural resources. And we will fight a war for natural resources very shortly, unless, anyway. We have been doing that. But there's a man, there's a black man in this country, and I don't know, don't know his name, I wish I knew, and I wish I'd meet him. He has taken pictures of Indian chiefs and put them beside pictures of black chiefs from Africa. Okay. The two are so similar that it's, it's, it's like, oh my lord, why haven't we not recognized that before this? Why did we not see that? <laughs> but, but you see, we white people do that. We white people have turned God into an old white man with a long gray beard who looks like Charlton Heston playing Moses. And we've turned the baby Jesus into somebody that looks like a little Pillsbury oh, Doughboy. He, yeah, he looks like a little Pillsbury Doughboy. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Mary didn't have blonde hair, blue eyes, and fair skin. She was a uh, Jewess and lived in the Middle East. You don't see many Jewesses living in the Middle East today who are blonde hair, blue eyed, with pale skin. This is ridiculous. Yeah. But but we have to we have to have a person that we pray to who looks like us. Imagine white people having to pray to a black Jesus. Uh huh. <laughs> now, if you go into a black church, you can have that experience. Yeah, I've been to a black church. Yeah. There's, there's black yeah. Jesus everywhere. There is. There yeah. is. Oh no, really? I don't know if he'll understand me. I think he will. I think he will. Or if God, is, uh, or I think God is a spirit and has neither gender nor color. But if God produces children, then God must be female. And I hope she'll understand me, that black female. Yes. When I have the chance to meet that person, that spirit. How do white people get over their ignorance? What's the best? Education. Okay. And how do they do that? How do they? Self-education. They read the myth of race. Everybody should read on tyranny. They should do this this week. Everybody, everybody should read Enemy of the People by Marvin Kelvin. This book should be required reading in every college class this week because we're going to go into elections. Yes. In within three weeks. What is it? November eighth. Yep. Everybody should read that before that election because if they don't, they will make the are liable to make a big mistake. Anybody who says the press is the enemy of the people, wants to take us back to pre-Jeffersonian times. Mm -hmm. We need to realize what is going on here. We need to realize that we are being, we are being led by total ignorance. Until, uh, he won't read this book. Make no mistake about this. Professor Trump. <laughs> I call him Dinosaurus T. Rump because, okay. it, because it's like dinosaur, like Tyrannosaurus Rex T. Rex. Yes. He's like, he thinks like a dinosaur. He has a face that looks like a rump. Oh, no, no. He has a mouth that looks like an anal aperture. And when he opens it, he vocalizes excrement. Mm -hmm. And you can. Yeah, there's a lot of BS. I didn't about. say that. I said excrement. <laughs> excrement. You have to be careful about you, what you say or people will accuse you of making obscene remarks. I don't I make. Know. And I don't say what I should say, but I think he, 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 he is. He's like he doesn't know his derriere from a depression in the dirt. Okay, got it. That's one of his problems. Got it. So we, you have to be careful about how you describe him. And if you describe him in ways that send people to the dictionary, mm -hmm. that's better than having them say she talks in obscenities. Okay. I don't speak in obscenities, okay. but I recognize barn dirt when I see it. And when I, oh, all the time. I don't do it when I'm on camera. I'm no. totally stupid, okay. but uh, pretty close, but not totally. My generation, I'm a millennial, you know, and a lot of us don't even believe. I've heard a lot of my friends say, I'm not going to vote. I don't believe in politics anymore. It's all rigged. It's all false. That's and good. I had that in my brain at one point, too, but then I realized, wait. Yeah. If I don't participate, I'm just letting, I'm letting, I'm giving my power away. The people who wrote the Constitution of the United States, were very young, mm -hmm. but very smart, mm -hmm. and very well educated. Mm -hmm. And young people who say, I'm not gonna vote, mm -hmm. are young and not smart, and mm -hmm. poor and well-schooled, mm -hmm. but badly educated. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, if, if there are young people saying that today, it's because they have been educated badly. Mm -hmm. They don't realize how lucky they are to live in this country. Well, 
Well, the thing, I, when I was in high school, Jay, I was able to do American Studies. I was in the American Studies program. And I actually got really upset because the majority of the people in my program were considered talented, smart. But we had the white kids there that were jocks, mm -hmm. that were, they didn't care about the education. They didn't, they education, they didn't care about what they were learning with American no. Studies, but, okay. they, but they were in that position because they were good, good kids who played sports and their families were contributing to the school because they had the means to do so. And then I ended up getting out of that program because I was going through depression in high school. I really just couldn't stand the environment. It was like a prison to me. And I remember going into the subhuman classrooms right. <laughs> and they were not teaching the same things. They weren't teaching about the government. They weren't teaching about like politics or all these different things. They were the art of listening. And I remember this kid had a question in my class and I like, got so livid at the teacher because I was just like, you're not listening to this person's well, question who needs help. While you're teaching the art of listening. Yes. yes. And I just got so mad that she sent me out into the hallway. <laughs> So you can listen better, listen better from the whole. I was like, I don't know what you're doing. I was like, the art of listening. Listen to myself. Okay, about what like source and spirit is telling you, not what you're projecting at me as to what you think is right. And, and you get to have, you get have, and I'm power to say, practice what you preach, bitch. Yeah. Make, practice what you preach, old lady. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah, yeah, and somebody should have. Yeah. Somebody should have. But yeah. however, she probably didn't realize that that young man didn't understand what she was saying because mm -hmm. he was probably dyslexic. And he was probably unable to hear words the way they're said or to mm -hmm. see them the way they're written. And the film The Eye of the Storm, have you seen the film no, The Eye of the Storm? No, I have not. Oh my dear. Well, you, you, did, well, you did not do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> Get a copy of the film The Eye of the Storm. Okay. You can rent it. Or go to the library, they'll have it at the in any college, okay. college or university library. You look at that film and realize that all 16 of the kids in that film are moderately to severely dyslexic and weren't supposed to graduate from high school. Now I suspect that that young man who had his hand up wanted her to slow down and let him, you know, he, he wanted to understand and decipher what it was he was hearing. Uh -huh. Because when you say to a to child who's dyslexic, to a, any person of any age who's dyslexic, Turn to page 33 to do the, the even numbered answer, even numbered questions. Write those out. Okay. That, that's like saying to us, brilliant in the slipping throat, the gyre and gentle in the way. Okay. It makes no sense to them. They don't hear what you they don't hear words the way they're said. And when you say, read this sentence, they will read a word here and then one from the sentence above, one from the sentence below, and they'll read two or three of those words in that sentence backward. You put the word on on the board for a third grader and say, what's that word? And some of them say on and some of them say no. You put up the word was and some of them say saw and some of them say was. And then you know what you're dealing with. And then you say, okay, there's a special way that I have to help you and here's the way we're going to do it. And then you teach that child how to read using Orton Gilliam Phonics, which is a program that is designed to teach the dyslexic child how to read. Now, that's important because Four out of five dyslexics are boys. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't say that four out of five boys are dyslexic. I said that four out of five dyslexics in the classroom are boys. It is a male problem for the most part. Mm -hmm. It is passed down through the male line. If a teacher knows about dyslexia, she will say to that child, you and I are going to visit about this later. Can you, can you hold your question until I have a few minutes and then you and I will sit down and I'll tell you exactly what it was I was saying because I think you didn't understand what I was saying instead of saying, you're not listening. But did she teach, I wonder if that teacher taught you the listening skills first. Do you know the listening skills? What are they? Don't sit there and nod your head to me unless you're I'm sorry, listening. no, I'm listening to you, but I'm getting, my thoughts are going into something else. It's going into, like, the school system itself in America. But before we go into the school system itself in America, children got to be taught the physical aspects of the listening skills. Good listeners have quiet hands, feet, and mouths. You teach that the first day of school, that does away with all the finger in the nose, all the twiddling with their hair, all the dancing in the, with their feet under the seat while you're talking. All the chew, gum chewing is done away with. 
The rule, the rule in the room is good listeners have quiet hands, feet, and mouth. Good listeners keep their eyes on the person who's speaking. When a child looks out the window, his mind goes out the window. Good listeners keep their eyes on the person who's speaking. Good listeners listen from the beginning to the very end. The kid who's waiting, and it's usually a little white girl waving her hand around, playing look at me. That means she's thinking of what she's going to say instead of what the speaker is saying. Good listeners listen from, good listeners decide to learn something. There isn't a teacher on earth who can teach a child who has decided not to learn. Mm -hmm. So in order to get, in order to get the goodies in the classroom, you practice the listening skills. And at the end of the week, those who have practiced the listening skills most diligently are the ones who get in the grab bag or the ones who get a, 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 a special little treat because they did an extremely exemplary job all week long. It works. The listening skills work. And when I taught my third graders, and when we'd have a resource person come in to take talk to the kids, the resource person would say, I felt like those kids were going to consume me. I said, that's right. They listen to every word you say. I've never had kids listen the way these kids do. It's a skill that you teach, and you expect kids to practice it, because they'll learn twice as much in half the time. It's a very valuable skill. Now, what's your question? <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> My question was going to be, did you apply those tips that, that the listening skills in your classroom that you said Every day. Every, I apply them as you well as my kids. Me. You what? just check me on listening. Well, yes, yes. And I check people on listening because if you're, if you're piddling with your hands while I'm talking, your, your, your brain, you may have a really good brain, but it isn't really good enough to think of several things at the same time. So where your eyes are, that's where your where your thoughts. What your yeah, multitasking is one of the most disgusting things that I hear in classrooms. No. The art of multitasking. I've heard that from your time. Well, there, there, there's no art to multitasking. That means you can do twice as many things half as well. And in this country, we are perfectly content to have things done half as well. We're perfectly content to have education half as good as it ought to be. Because after all, you don't want to educate these kids too much. They'll know more than they ought to. People don't expect them to know that much. You can't get your snow. Did you get snow here? Yes. <laughs> we got sleet. And they came down from, this is my daughter, Sarah. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. We needed to take a little break.